Hello everybody, welcome back. I told you guys on my YouTube community page and my Instagram that we we're gonna do an updated Q&A because it's been a good while and you know, life has changed. Not really, but kinda. And I got a lot of new subscribers since my last one and they may not have seen it and they might have wanna ask me a question, I don't know. So, I told you guys to ask me anything you wanted and I would answer them all. So let's do it. I always like to do these Q&As with this one. It's fun. Hi guys. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> if you guys didn't know, Dusty has his own channel. It's called Dusty Budget Survivalist. He's a hoot. <laughs> and it's actually really funny because he does a lot of taste testings for survival meals. It's funny. Anyways. Okay. Um, I'm in jammies and my hair is a mess, but I'm comfy and I'm feeling good. It's like I'm hanging out with my besties. Let's do this. All right. First question. What would you eat for a week if everything was free? Tell us your preferences, Brooke. And we want to know at least two restaurants you'd like to be thrilled to... I can't read today. <laughs> and we want to know at least two restaurants you'd be thrilled to dine at with your family. More if you can think of them. Okay, if everything was free... For me, if everything was free... I would eat chicken, marsala. Stuff so good. Or Italian chicken cutlet. I'm a chicken person. I love chicken. So, yeah, that. Mm. Pizza and huckleberry ice cream. When we went to Yellowstone, <laughs> somebody got hooked on huckleberry, y'all. <laughs> and you can't find it here anywhere. Okay. What was the second part? <clears throat> Two restaurants I'd be thrilled to dine at with my family. For me... Personally, me, my preference would be Texas Roadhouse. I am a sucker for Texas Roadhouse bacon and cheddar fries and dipping it in ranch. It's a good restaurant. I just don't okay. know why I don't like to go. There. I don't think you like the atmosphere. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I, it's good. I mean, the food, if we get it, out to, get it to go. It's, it's not as good as you, if you get it to go. But it's, they, you don't have to be there. It's severely lacking. <laughs> And cheese. If you get it to go, I don't know why. So that's one. Second would be Culver's. Culver's. No place better. Yeah, I love Culver's. It's so good. There's one about 30, 40 minutes away. Mm, give or take. Every time we're down that way, which is rare, but we make a trip to Culver's. Even if it's just to get a small little ice cream, Culver's is bomb. You're truly an inspiration, Brooke, from your dishes to blessing boxes to showing us budget-friendly meals. You don't care for seafood, LOL. True. <laughs> <laughs> but as your family, what's a good salmon or shrimp recipe that you'd recommend? Hi, boys and dusty. Oh, you do salmon. I do salmon occasionally. I have to be in the mood. Like, that happens maybe once a year. <laughs> but I do salmon occasionally. I know, I told y'all, I say it wrong. I pronounce the L. I try, I, I know I'm saying it wrong, <laughs> but my mouth will just not pronounce it any other way. Salmon. 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 It hurts. Mm. Um, and I do tuna, but does that count? No. I like tuna salads. A good salmon or shrimp recipe. So, I am not a judge on how good it is because I don't taste it when I eat it. I just give it to them. So, shrimp. When I cook it, and they seem to like it, I do the shrimp boils. Mm -hmm. Those are good. I get the, what is the brand, Louisiana crab boil. But it's a little spicy. Yeah. I put a lemon in it, some minced garlic, some Cajun seasoning, some onion, and one of those bags of the Louisiana crab boil mix mm -hmm. in it. And that last one you made wasn't too spicy. Though. It wasn't very spicy. It was good. And I boil it in there. They love it. Mm -hmm. And after it's done, I squirt more lemon juice on it. That's pretty good. And salmon, lemon juice, salt, butter. Yes. For like 25 minutes in the oven. It's good. I That's eat good. it. I love it. I found you on YouTube a couple months ago. I love you and your family and your recipes. Your tips on saving money have been wonderful. Thanks to you, I got a lot of my stuff worth the Dollar Tree this month and saved a good bit. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. That's like, I love seeing comments like that because you guys remind me why I started this whole thing to begin with. I just want to help people. And I, it's not like I forget. It's just sometimes... 
It feels good to get reassured that you're doing the right thing. It's just like, oh. Yeah. It's working. What I'm doing is working. I don't really have a question. I just wanted to say that I watch and listen to your videos all day long while I'm in the office. <laughs> you keep me from going insane. Well. <laughs> I think we're just both on the track to insanity, maybe. And we just vibe that way because it's not sane over here. <laughs> but I'm glad I can help and make you laugh along the way. Were you always so frugal even before marriage and kids? Yeah. I had to be. I grew up poor. And when I say poor, I mean we were poor. We were poor. So I had to be. It's kind of like I learned it for, out of necessity, which I'm very grateful for that because learning it out of necessity, I, I know when to use it now. How would you save money as a single parent living paycheck to paycheck? As a single parent living paycheck to paycheck. First off, one thing that I would do personally is go try to sign up on any assistance that I possibly could so I could stretch my, my pay as far as far as far as I could. I can't talk today. I apologize. But I would go sign up on any assistance that I possibly could. Even if I didn't think I would qualify, I would still give it a go. To see if maybe they could help me. And even if they only give you like maybe $30 a month in food stamps. That's $30. That's a good chunk. And after I signed up on everything that I possibly could. I would make sure to go through my bills. And to see what was. I wouldn't want to take everything away that was a want. Because I wouldn't want my children to not have wants. But like. I wouldn't have cable. I would only have basic internet. I would maybe get a streaming package or two. Probably Hulu because it's pretty much the cheapest. And you can get free streaming services. I don't, I mean, it's kind of like a touchy subject, but I'll say it. I'm not, we're besties. We can talk about this. So, a lot of times, I hear it from my best friend. It is really hard to get your significant other to pay child support. So, I wouldn't rely on that at all, and I would base all of my bills off of what I make alone. And if your significant other, your, well, your ex-significant other, if they actually paid child support to help with the kids, that's just that extra that you can have to buy your kids things when something breaks, to buy them clothes when they outgrow it. So, I would pretend like it wasn't even coming in, so I wouldn't have to rely on it in that one month or week that they didn't pay I, I wouldn't even have to worry about it. That was one. That would be one thing that I did. I hear it from my best friend a lot about how that's just such a challenge, and I'll be like, "Oh, that yeah, was, just waiting for money that might not come in." Yeah, and relying on it because you based your bills off of it. Yeah, understandable. Which is awful, <clears throat> but nowadays it's kind of what happens. You hear about it a lot. Do, 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 do. I love your channel and have been binge watching since I found you. Keep up the awesome vids and you're a beautiful soul. Thank you. I love that last Q&A. You're always so real. Well. <laughs> you is who you is. Sometimes I wonder, do I talk too much? Do I overshare things? But I really don't have. A, you don't share anything that you don't want anybody to know. I'm an open book. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm an open book. Love you, Brooke. Thank you for being your true self. I've been binge watching. I can't work. Binge watching your I have been binge watching your channel. How about doing a series on just shelf stable meals? I've been trying to come up with some ideas. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> I have a list. Like, I read most of my comments. If I miss some, it's totally by accident. And when people have a suggestion or something they want to see, I write it down in my notes. And I have it, I have them all written down, but I have a list that is as long as my two legs and arms put together. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to them, y'all, I swear. And this is a good one, too. It's going on the list. I love your channel. You have such a great personality. I live 2,000 miles from my family. And I have a sister named Brooke. But no E. <laughs> so, I love watching and feeling like I'm with family. My husband and I have four kids. 16, 14, 6, and 2. It's so hard to find meals that everyone can enjoy. How do you stay on budget and still make food that isn't repetitive and everyone likes? You know what? I don't know. I just, for me, myself, I get food fatigue very easily. I cannot stand having the same stuff over and over again. 
So I just like to switch it up for my sanity. And I guess it really helps y'all's sanity at the same time. Well, it helps to, you know, we're for the most part not picky. I mean, every now and again you'll get Callan that doesn't like something. But yeah, that is a good plus too. <clears throat> um, if you got a picky family, it's hard to yeah. hard to do that anyway. Colin is the most picky one that we have. Y'all know how he is about vegetables. It's like pulling teeth. Ryder is the second most pickiest. Mm -hmm. His pickiness is something. <laughs> I don't know what. He used to not be like this. When he was small, he would eat everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. But as he's grown older, he's like, mm, the texture. I just don't like the texture. <laughs> so, it's, he's he makes it difficult sometimes. Brayden, let me tell y'all. That boy will eat anything. Yeah, he's a garbage disposal. I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> I really am, because that helps But for me. the most part, you, you can find a happy medium. And the whole repetitive thing, I think that's just because... I personally can get really sick of food. So I just come up with things. And another thing that helps me, like if I have this meal that I make that calls for these five ingredients, I just switch it up. I'm like, okay, what can I substitute this with and this ingredient? And it makes the dish completely different. So I like to do that a lot. So if you have a favorite dish and you think your family might be getting sick of it, just like write down all the ingredients and see what you can switch out for something else. And it can change the whole dish and it can taste amazing. So try to do that sometimes. Brooke, do you or have you worked outside the home? If you don't, would you like to? When the boys are grown, what would you do? Ever considered a business or charity catering or teaching life skills? This is a good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> To answer the first part, I have worked outside of the home in our early years. Um, I used to be an assistant manager for a store. And then when I got pregnant with Ryder, Dusty and I decided that I should stay home with kids because child care is insane. So expensive. Even back then, that was even more ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even imagine the prices <clears throat> nowadays. But back then, it was insane. And there was yeah. all of my money that I would be making would be going to child care and gas. Like, there was no point in me working. It's so sad how it, it just doesn't help sometimes. To, mm. It's just awful. Unless you have a super high-paying job that you can find. But yeah. most people have just regular nine-to-fives, and it just doesn't help. Yeah, especially women. <clears throat> women get paid a lot less than men. It really Our sucks. Our voice is about gone. <laughs> when Ryder was a baby, I cleaned houses for a little bit. And then I made it kind of my job. By saving money. And I... Okay. Like, this is how I looked at it. Dusty made a dollar. It was my job to take that dollar and turn it into two dollars. By golly, I did it too. I would do coupons. Y'all, I was a big couponer. <laughs> three I was ring binder. It. I was <laughs> good at it too. Yep. It just... The reason I stopped is because the deals just started not being they worth dwindled. it. Yeah. So, I was like, that was my job. I would do any cashback program that I could. I wrote all the companies. They would send me gift cards for being such a loyal customer. This was my job. I was good at the coupon, and I will say. So, Dusty made the money, and I my job was to stretch that money. If you don't, would you like to when the boys are grown? I don't know. What would I do? She said it. What would you do? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I thought she said something about... Ever considered a business or yeah. charity catering or teaching life skills? Yeah. Okay, this is the deal. I don't know how. I well, would you're love... you're kind of doing that now by kinda. showing people. But you could do workshops and stuff at the community center. And... Here's the thing. I would not even know how to start something like that. No idea. And I would love to start a nonprofit. I would love to start a food pantry. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I have Googled this over and over and over again. And I keep trying to make sense of it all. There's so much red tape you have to go through. <sighs> I would honestly, if, if I set out to do that, like 100% go into it, I would need to get me a lawyer. That would help me do it all because. Cut through the legalities. I don't know about that kind of stuff. It's just, I don't know. 
but I would love to, and I would love to do workshops, and I see a lot of these YouTube, I see a lot of these YouTubers doing, like, lives where they teach people how to do this and this, and I would love to do that. It's just that I am extremely awkward, y'all, and I would, like, fumble over my words, and y'all be like, oh my god, Brooke is a mess. How did Dusty propose? Okay. Which time? <laughs> I'm kidding. We have never broken up. We've always been together. <laughs> it sounded like you broke. Yeah. We broke up. One time we were just talking and, and you did it. Mm. But it wasn't like set in stone. He was just talking and he didn't have a ring or anything. You know, that kind of thing. So, I was sitting on his sister's couch and they were all acting really secretive, and I thought something was up. But I had, like, my suspicions, like, I didn't know it was going to be a good thing. <laughs> and then Dusty walks in behind me with a ring, and he says, will you marry me? And I stared at him for, like, five minutes, just stunned and not saying a word. And he finally went, can you please say something? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And that was, that was yeah. it. It wasn't anything, like, super crazy. Uh, it's just... Well, I mean, it didn't happen much back then, so it's made do with what oh. we have. <laughs> I still have that ring. I'm just allergic to no, it. No, I still have that ring. Okay, but I... It's oh, well, my, you still have it, but i my possession. It. Um, it's in my possession. Y'all notice I don't wear my wedding ring, and that is because I am allergic to every ring in existence. I've even tried the silicone rings, and they just make me itch. So, I don't wear my ring, but, you know, rings don't make the marriage. What's in the heart, does? Oh! <laughs> I have mine on. Dusty wears his. I don't wear mine because... I just don't feel right without mine. It's just my fingers don't feel I right. I mean, I have to take my... I bleed. Yeah. It makes me bleed because I'm so allergic <laughs> to it. I just can't. So I love you guys so much. You remind me of how my husband and I are together. The perfect fit. <laughs> He's annoying, yeah. though. Yin and yang. Totally. <laughs> and did you guys see my picture on my Instagram, if you follow me on there? Me and Dusty had our 16-year anniversary last week uh, of us being together, like, dating. That's the one that we kind of pay attention to more than our wedding anniversary, oddly. But we went to this pottery place, and we painted Christmas trees, and we got them back today. <laughs> and mine is bright and, and shiny. And Dusty's is black. <laughs> <laughs> Total yin and yang. Okay. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Hey, Brooke. I absolutely love you. Your family and channels. I watch you and Dusty all the time. I was wondering if you and your family have any special Christmas traditions you all do every year. I know you give and help people. And that's so great seeing you getting the kids involved. Just wondering if you have anything special as a family you do. Whether it's Christmas caroling, cooking, baking, or any other traditions traditions also do you have any budget friendly gift ideas to get a husband who has everything he makes it so difficult they make it difficult I don't, don't they I, mean, I, I know he says he don't but when i look and i have any idea he's like i have that I have i'm like when when did you get this i've had that for years you know what the best thing i like is just me giving you a list of x amount of things i hate that <clears throat> and you can pick uh, and, and I'll still be surprised because I won't know which one. I hate that. It's not personal. And but it's it just, is. It's like you yeah, go to the store I, and picking out your present. No, it's not. We'll talk about this later, <laughs> sir. <laughs> that's what, I mean, that's the best way to do it. If you think he's got everything, say, like, give me a list. You'll still be surprised. And you know you're going to like it. And you know I did it right. I and mean, that's just how, I, I, my way of thinking. To get back on this. This question um, was wondering if you and your family have any special Christmas traditions. I think we do. I mean, um, we just we go see the the light shows every year. We don't have anything oh, big. Yeah. We go. We do one. We do. We pick a day to go see Christmas lights around town. Yes, houses. that's usually the day before Christmas Eve. Yeah, the day before Christmas Eve, we always get the kids in the car. We get snackies. And go look at lights. We go look at lights. And we don't get hot cocoa or anything. We go to Sonic and get slushies. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the south. It's not very cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So that's one thing we do every year. It's the 23rd. So that's a good tradition that we do. And the kids love it and we love it. Um, another thing that we do, we always go see Bass Pro Santa Claus. Yeah. And before we go see Bass Pro Shop Santa Claus, we go to Crackle Barrel yep. and have dinner. And we all pick out a Christmas ornament at Crackle Barrel. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we do. Yep. That's the only real big one that we got. Everything else is just kind of for that year. If something big is happening that year, we'll do it. But that's like the set in stone stuff that we do. Well, we go, uh, well, going to Mamaw's on Christmas Eve well, is yeah, a, tradi I mean, a tradition. All right. And we do that every year, 6 p.m. Every year we go to my mamaw's. The whole family does for Christmas Eve. And we have a bunch of finger foods and we open gifts and everybody acts silly. And we play games. Yeah. After asking for gift ideas for her husband who has everything, she says, I mean, he has me. I'm everything right. <laughs> you are correct, ma'am. Put Wait, a bow on your forehead and say, You, you are you correct. Go. She said, LOL, no, seriously, I'm out of ideas. I want to get him. I want something different. He's a hunter, and he reminds me of Dusty oh. somewhat, and I'm just clueless this year on what to get him. He likes pretty much anything, but I want something different that is better oh. than the usual gifts. I ask him, and he says, anything you want. Well, does he hunt on the ground? Hold on. I'm not done reading. <laughs> oh. Great answer really helps me. Not, LOL, men. I know. I know. <laughs> Any advice greatly appreciated. Maybe Dusty could even help me on this too. Thanks for your wonderful channel. Great uh -huh. info and tips. And being two of my favorite channels. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And if he hunts not in a tree stand, if he hunts on the ground in it at all, Muddy, the brand Muddy, makes a very good seat that you tie to a tree. I actually bought one this year. And it is phenomenal. I love it. The boys actually use it more than I do. They actually, they they love it. It's very comfortable. You can sit all day and not get, your butt doesn't get cold or tired or hurting. That is one thing. And they're like $38, I think. But it's a, it's called M-U-D-D-Y, Muddy. And it's a stand that you tie to the base of a tree and sit on. If he hunts, he'll like it. You know what? Ammunition. You know, no. Hunting rounds. Pause, y'all. Pause. <laughs> Dusty, I just got a good idea for your <clears throat> channel. Oh, yeah? Good Christmas gift ideas on a budget huh. for men like you. Oh. Because we have so much trouble. But it's not. And no, it's not trouble in your head because you're the person. <laughs> when you're with someone that is, t I'm, okay, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but me and Dusty, literally yin and yang, we are total opposites. I am bright colors, rainbow, happy-go-lucky, all this. And Dusty's like, I just wear camo. I don't see rainbow. <laughs> like, his rainbow. My rainbow is real tree. <laughs> exactly. Like, his vision, something happened. And when he looks at a rainbow, he only sees green and brown. <laughs> like, we're total opposites. And they say opposites attract. And it's true. Mm. I guess we balance each other out or something. I don't know. Yeah. But it's really hard when you're like a total opposite and you're trying to find a gift for someone that is nothing like you in your head. Mm. Like, I'm all about happiness and kindness and Dusty's like, hmm. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Hey, Brooke, what's a good way to start our garden to become more self-sufficient as the inflation is still rising here in New Zealand? I hear New Zealand is really bad. I've been seeing a lot of people comment that they're from New Zealand and they're talking about how prices of everything is just insane. Somebody said something the other day. I forget what product it was exactly. But for us, it was like two ninety eight, and they said it was $18. Again. Okay, one thing that I would do to become more self-sufficient is start a garden and you have to first look at the space that you have. Do you ha want a large ground garden or do you want a small garden? Are you working with small spaces? Now, I encourage you to really look up trellis gardening because I am switching from my ground cover garden to a trellis container garden next year. Dusty's got to prepare because he's going to be building me some things. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Yeah, um, and I have been following someone on TikTok for a really long time that does trellis gardening, and this person has a fourth of the size of a garden that I have, and they get four times more produce than I do. It's because everything grows better if it's in a trellis. So, look into that. That can really help, like, just growing your own things in your backyard, and even little containers can help you a whole lot. 
maybe look into getting some chickens so you can have your own eggs. You don't need a ton of chickens. Three chickens can get you a lot of eggs. They can. They can. Sometimes I have so many eggs. I have 10 chickens, but still, mm -hmm. so many eggs. I don't know what the laws are in New Zealand, but Ryder has informed me that you guys can hunt certain animals, I think. Yeah. I, I think he's correct because Ryder knows the stuff about that kind of thing. Well, at least I'm putting my trust in him. Take advantage of that if you can. Now, if you're like me and you're not a hunter, you're a gatherer, I don't blame you because they're the hunters. I am not. I, I like meat. I can eat meat. Can I go out there and harvest that meat? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. It's just, it's just who I am. Now, in a situation that I would have to, I'm sure I could. But I prefer to be a gatherer. I think that's that's a good start to self sufficiency. Yeah, a garden, and some chickens. Definitely. Let's see. I've watched your videos on how to put together a holiday meal on a dime, and I'm wondering what's your method of getting all those holiday leftovers used up. I just did our Thanksgiving on the 19th, and I'm looking at a fridge full of delicious leftovers I don't want to waste. As I'm making my plans for it, all oh, got me wondering what meals you might come up with, and how do you go about preserving. What you couldn't use before it goes bad. Okay. Ooh, here you go. Here we go, girlfriend. Let's go. So, casseroles. What I would do with casseroles, this is just me. If sometimes you just don't want to eat the same thing, especially after Thanksgiving, over and over and over and over. Food fatigue is real, y'all. We've talked about this. So, <laughs> what I would do so it doesn't go to waste. Because, it's to me, in my opinion, it's kind of hard to revamp a casserole into something else because it's got so many specific ingredients what i would do is put it in a small container and put it in the freezer mm. and you could just heat it up on another day in another month because that stuff is good in a deep freezer for up to three to six months i'm pretty sure so just turn them into freezer meals freeze those babies all right and you can put some parchment paper on top to help prevent freezer burn the freeze like the frost will go on top of the parchment paper instead of on top of the food. So, that would really help. And turkey. Okay. With turkey, I would use it, the carcass, to make a good thick broth and can up some broth. If you don't can, you can even let the broth cool off and you can get freezer safe containers and freeze your broth. You can do that and it can make some really good soups. Um, your leftover meat on your bird. You can can that as well. You can rip it off and you can make that bone broth and you can pack it in a can and you can can it and it'll stay nice and juicy. But ways that I like to use turkey meat that's not just turkey, casseroles, baby. Use it for anything you would use. Chicken, like pulled chicken, just use the turkey. You can make chicken casserole with turkey instead. Pot pie, turkey pot pie. You can do, ooh, instead of chicken salad, you can make turkey salad, and it is good. It's so good. What else? Other things that you could use? Oh, gosh, just off the top of my head. Uh, oh, wraps. You could do wraps. You can maybe season it up with a little lemon pepper and heat it up and put it in a wrap with, like, a lettuce mix. That would be really good. How does your brain work? I don't know. <laughs> it's just like, you're like Rain Man over here with food. <laughs> it's, it, it, uh, it's amazing. Sometimes I think I have a disorder and it just comes out this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you reach 100k <clears throat> subscribers, will you do anything special to celebrate? You'll be there soon enough. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I never thought I would even make it this far. And I've got 67,000 and some change right now. <laughs> um. So, I can't really think that far in advance because I never thought I would even be here. But let's just pretend that I will get there. Mm. I'll probably be in disbelief for a good minute. Yeah. I might cry a few times. <laughs> I'll sit on the floor and cry. Uh, I'll probably do a big giveaway. Yeah. I love giving away stuff. It's like my thing. I, I have to give I have to give back. And we'll take a picture with your play button. If that happens. <laughs> we'll see. Would you ever consider a meet and greet? I have told her to do this 
like four different times Here's and it would work. She's worried that she's going to be sitting there and it's going to be like in the movies where they're sitting there in the seat and there's nobody there. It would devastate her. So she's scared to do it because she's afraid it'll disheart that, her. I mean, so many, okay, a lot of um, the subscribers and viewers on this channel live so far away. Like, I wouldn't want anybody to spend their money to come and see me. I'm, <laughs> I'm lame. But, I will say this. If you are ever out and about and you see me, please come say hi. I will hug you. <laughs> I have seen so many of you guys out and about and I hug you before I even ask, which is probably not nice. I probably should ask for consent. Because a lot of people, a lot of people don't no, like I mean, people touching them. I just, I automatically hug. So if I have hugged you and you don't like it, I really apologize. I need to tell myself, ask if you can hug, Brooke. It's just an automatic thing with me. So please come and say hi. Please come and say hi. Because it makes my day and I feel giddy all day long. She does. I do. Um, I have seen, I'm trying to think, one, two. I have seen quite a few, quite a few. Um, I went on a trip with my sisters and my Aunt Vicky, and I seen one of you guys in Florida. Somebody hollered, Brooke! <laughs> and I was trying so hard to find you because I was going to run up and give you a hug, but I didn't find you. It was in a big crowd, too. Yeah. So, if you've seen me in Florida with my Aunt Vicky and my sister Emily and Caitlin, I, I heard you. <laughs> I really wanted to give you a hug. Okay, do you have a good deer chili spaghetti and taco recipe? Okay, here's the deal with that. What you need to do is just do your regular recipe with tacos or spaghetti or chili. Put the deer meat in, say a hamburger meat. It works for us. It's a good. My dad, absolutely, and my sister Madison, she would kill for some deer tacos. Madison loves them, and my dad does too. They're good. They're going to be getting a gift in a couple weeks of a lot of deer meat mm. because Braden got another, he got his first buck. He's harvested deer before, but never a buck. Mm. So, is that true? Yes. That wasn't a buck? No, the juvenile hunt, it, it was either sex. It was though. Oh. Ryder harvested a buck last year. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I got mixed up. Mm -hmm. He got his first buck. Mm -hmm. And I have so much deer meat. I have. Seven cubic foot. Is it seven? No. Cubic the foot. Big one? The no, small the, ones. the the chest yeah. freezer. Seven point one. Packed to the gills with just deer meat. And we have used so many. I have made so many deer jerky recipes. We do roast. So many we've had a lot of tenderloin. It just stays there and never dwindles down. <laughs> so a lot of my family and friends are gonna be getting deer meat. Um I'm in Ohio where deer are he oh wait, I cannot read. I'm in Ohio. We are huge deer hunters. Love you, bestie. You are a huge inspiration. Tell Dusty, don't give up. He's too shy. Or <laughs> you're just a nut. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> I know. Okay, here's the thing about Dusty Boo Boo. Okay. He is so serious and reserved. And I don't know why you like me. Because I am not that. <laughs> we all know this. Sometimes I try to get him out of his shell, and he's just like, Ugh, it's just not me. But then there are moments that he does get out of his shell, and he is so goofy. The kids eat it up. They absolutely love it. He's just got to get more comfortable about the idea of being goofy and being okay with it. <laughs> I'm, I have my moments. You have your moments. More moments than you used to. You're getting more comfortable with being yourself. Okay, I'm very proud of how far he's come in life. <laughs> he's starting to get more comfortable behind the camera, definitely. And I'm so, I love watching him interact with the boys behind the camera now. Because what you guys see is how he really is. And I love that you guys get to see that part. In the beginning, he was kind of, I see, I think sometimes his military comes out. Mm. I think that's, that, that, that well, is. I just, some of my stuff, I just need to be on point with and make sure that they uh, it's understood and I just want to make sure people understand what I'm trying to get across. No, Dusty should have been a teacher. Uh, a few people have said that but I just don't. I mean, it's just how it is. 
Do your boys know what they want to do when they grow up? Ryder wants to be HVAC. Brayden, I don't know. He's not, he's talked about that. He wants to try to, I think they're, they're wanting to do TWRA like game wardens, but they don't know about the extra school that it's going to take to do it. They're kind of shy. They're we're, kinda, we're here for anything. Yeah, whatever they want to do, I don't care. Except, <clears throat> I have my own personal opinions about some things that a lot of men try to go into. Policing and military. I really don't want my babies in that. <laughs> just because they're my babies. Not that I'm against it. It's just, you know, they're your babies. You, As a mama, you don't want to worry all the time. But I love them. I support them. <sighs> also, at any point, they can change their mind, and that's okay. My son changed his mind five times before settling on a career. Mm -hmm. I just started watching your content, Love Your Southern Sense of Humor. My question, a viewer of yours gifts you $3 million. Do you continue your channel and be frugal, or do you start cooking like a gourmet chef? Just a fun question. She can't help but be frugal. It's not ever going to change. If she's got two cents or two million... It's, she's the same. Okay. We came from having two cents, and now we got six cents, but you still <laughs> haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, I'm telling y'all, we were pouring dirt. Um, so, how do you keep your money? Y you you want to save it. Like, if you start spending it all, you're not going to have any money in a few years. So, yeah, I'd still be frugal because I'd yeah. be thinking, oh, when's it going to go away? i got got to make it tight. <laughs> yeah. So, it's just me. There would still be budgets. There would still be limits. It, and I'm all for that, too, because just because you got a little extra money don't mean you have to spend it. If you got what you need and want, you're good. But yeah, like when something comes up, you're like, oh, I'm covered. Yeah. See, I accidentally clicked on one of your videos one day, and I'm so glad I did. I love your channel. Besides camping trips, do you go on family vacations? If so, where have you gone? If not, where would you like to go? Okay, listen here, y'all. Let me tell you. This is my thing. <clears throat> we, me, personally, and I think he's on the same page as me, but we don't like materialistic things. Like, I don't save our money to get the newest hot item. That's not what we do. Wait for it to go on sale. Two years down the road, same thing. Okay. <laughs> That's what I do. So, instead of putting our money on that kind of stuff, we save for memories. We like to travel. We like to take the kids on trips. Things that we never got to do as kids, and we want to make memories for them so they can have stories to tell their kids one day. And it's just something that we like to do. We want to save our money for experiences, not materialistic things. Because materialistic things break. And you can't have it forever. Memories you have forever. So, that's what we like to do. So, we do travel. And that's where our savings go. We always like to save And the boys have that. thanked us for that. Yeah. They really show their appreciation yeah. when we get to go on trips. Yeah. Um, but we do Myrtle Beach. That's one place we've been a bajillion times. Because yeah. that's like the place you go to in the south. Yeah. Myrtle Beach. Yeah. We've been to Destin, Florida. Fort Walton, Florida. We've been to Orlando, Florida. Um, We've been to Disney World. We took the kids to Disney World. I saved for that trip for almost... A long time. Years. <laughs> years it was totally worth every cent that i saved <laughs> i got to act like a kid yeah. and i got to watch my kids experience something that i never got to experience as a kid and it was the greatest feeling on the planet <laughs> and y'all best believe i got some deals too i it, yes i did 25 percent <laughs> off is what i got on the hotel for some deal they had i don't even know but yeah it took me like I want to say three years. Three? I don't know. It was a long time. It was a long I, time. I forgot about it even being a thing until you said that we were ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Long time. Long mm -hmm. time. Um, we have been to 39 states since mm -hmm. we've been together. 39. Mm -hmm. We took the kids to Yellowstone. We have taken them to... They have seen the outside of Area 51. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Yeah. Scary. Fun. 
they have been to Roswell, New Mexico. They've been to Las Vegas. They've been to New York City. We've been to Salem, Massachusetts. We've been to Boston, Massachusetts. We have been to um, Amish country in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, that was a trip too. That was a good one. Yeah. We've been to uh, the Grand Canyon. We've been to White Sands National Park. San Antonio, Texas, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, Miss Mississippi, Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah. But that was kind of just our base, and we went to New Orleans and came back. We've been to oh gosh, uh, some states we didn't stay long in, but yeah, but we've been through them. Yeah. We still have a lot of things on our bucket list before the kids grow up. And y'all probably wondering, how did you afford that? Y'all, I was so flipping frugal. <laughs> Those trips didn't cost much. Mm -mm. <laughs> the trip out west when we was gone for like two or three weeks, I can't even really remember how long it was. We didn't spend counting hotels and everything. And I had, y'all, I'm not even kidding you. I use coupon. I use my apps for food. Mm -hmm. I couponed. I did everything I possibly could. We took advantage of military discounts. I planned that trip for two years. We were going to go in the middle of COVID, so I had to put it off. And then inflation happened because it was going to be bigger than what it was, and I had to cut the trip in half because yeah, because gas prices went gas, yeah, it was insane. On us. So <clears throat> maybe we spent three thousand dollars on that trip, and we took the kids. Out west. It was like, what, 13 states on that trip. It was a big chunk. A, yeah. yeah, and if you're a little fat, fun fact, if you have not known this, I'm, I'm here to help you. If you're in the military, you can get into Yellowstone for free, White Sands for free, uh, Grand Canyon national for park. free. Yeah, every national park for free. For life. Yes. So, if you are prior military, please take advantage of this because that... Do not pay that entrance fee. You that, don't have to. Yes. That probably saved us just that alone, just him being in the military. And thank God they recognize the military out west. A lot of places around here don't. Yeah, they're, they're, they're spotty around it's here. It's really Out odd. west. We were stunned. Even the Dollar Tree out west gave military discounts on their items they did. I, it was unbelievable and it wasn't like a 10 percent discount it was like 30 40 percent i was like where are there we <laughs> we um the kids we took them on everything in roswell like there was like this little roswell i forget what it was called but you went into like a black light room you remember and it was like just alien what thing was that? yeah i can't remember what it was called because he was in the military they charged us a dollar a piece. Mm -hmm. So we got to do so many fun things. I took advantage of any discount we could possibly get. Yep. And just even if you're not in the military, look for coupons, look for deals, look for discounts. If just research. Do some research for your trip <coughs> and you will be amazed at how much you save. Traveling while not being wealthy a wealthy person is possible. Yep. You just have to plan. <laughs> you just have to plan. And when I tell y'all plan these for years, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Years. She has multiple trips going at a time and different dates set for every trip. And yes, it's it's it's, it's, it's insane. But then it all comes together and we go. I like it. Sometimes I think about doing videos about how to do Pigeon Forge on a budget since we live like right next to Pigeon mm -hmm. Forge. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me if you guys want to see that because I know lots of tips trick because I'm a local. <laughs> I know all the nicks and crannies things that y'all probably will be able to find mm. just let me know if y'all say that all right where would you like to go that was another part of the question okay i want to go <laughs> you i don't want to do this anymore <laughs> me and Ryder have a dream of going to uh, tuscany we want to go to italy oh that's fine we want to go to scotland that's and Oh, there's this lady that is in my Facebook group, and she's from Scotland, and she posts pictures sometimes. And I'm like, oh, so jealous, it's so beautiful. But that's where most of my ancestors are from, is Scotland, and I want to get back to my roots, you know. Fun fact, my ancestors were in Clan Sutherland. 
I came full circle, y'all, because I married a Sutherland. It's weird. <laughs> Anyways, so we want to go to Scotland. We want to go to London. We want to go to Hawaii. I want to go to every single state in the mainland. We like Oregon, Washington. We like Maine, Vermont. 13 New states. Hampshire. 13 more states? That's what said. We're 39. We got 39 right now. There's a lot of places that I want. Alaska. <laughs> That's so going to be a... I mean, I want to do all these things before I die. Ooh. Is it going to happen? Um, yeah. I doubt it. But it's good to dream. Don't give up on your dreams. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. Are you still using that budget laundry detergent? And did you still like it after you used it for a while? It is literally still being used. Y'all, I started that laundry detergent. I think it was... April or July 2022. I can't remember. One of those. Still I scooping. still have it and I'm still using it. It's almost gone. <laughs> it's almost gone. I probably have maybe 10 uh, more scoops left. Dude. 10 or 15 more scoops left. Okay. I'm going to have to re-up it. But y'all, that stuff cleans it's good. so good. It smells good too. It lasted a family of five. A family of five with three boys that are so dirty all the time because they can't stay out of the grass and mud. And they go hunting all the time in the woods and get covered in dirt. It lasted us over a year. 18 months? I don't even know. That stuff is amazing. Would you all ever consider meeting up with your followers in Pigeon Forge sometime? I would totally do it. If you all were coming to Pigeon Forge anyways, mm -hmm. I would not want you to make a trip and spend money just yeah. for that. But if you were coming to Pigeon Forge anyway, oh gosh, that'd be so fun. We'd go have a big good time. Oh my gosh, we go to Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> Hi, Brooke, I was wondering if there was anything that each of you won't eat. I will not eat a lot of fish. I will not eat crab. I will not eat shrimp. The, the texture in my mouth is so gross. I will not eat cantaloupe. I grow it in my garden. I will not eat cantaloupe. I, I grow it because they like it. What else? What else I don't eat? I don't know, but you're going to have to help me with that because I can't remember what I don't like to eat because I just don't Dusty eat. doesn't eat peas. Yeah, so I can. He doesn't I just eat don't peas. like them. He doesn't eat if peas. I, if he doesn't eat peas and he doesn't eat pasta salad. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> I'm just not. I mean, I can. I have... Does, there just, have been occasions where I've liked it, but not very. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Brayden, he doesn't like sweet potatoes, just plain sweet potatoes. They're disgusting. He doesn't like them. You like sweet potato fries, though, don't you? Oh. No. That's like the only thing Brayden doesn't eat. That crap's disgusting. He's in the background. <laughs> Colin, he doesn't like cooked carrots. He doesn't like cooked broccoli. Um, he doesn't like onions anything with onions in it lettuce he doesn't like lettuce no he the finally started to eat my, okay he eats lettuce if it's in a salad and i chop it up really really fine he does not eat lettuce if it's on a taco or no. on a burger no but he will eat lettuce <laughs> mushroom Ryder doesn't Maybe. like onions he doesn't like mayonnaise sour cream doesn't like sour cream and every time I don't like sour cream it's really funny okay so this one time when he was probably five I made loaded baked potatoes in a crock pot and I put sour cream on top and Ryder was eating it like it was the best thing on the planet sour cream and all he was like oh my gosh that was so good so Ryder had this big up this big idea that if he just got a spoonful of sour cream by itself that it would be delicious and he ate it and he was like he was loving it. He loved every second of that until he ate the sour cream by itself. And he's not touched sour cream since. <laughs> Unless it's like in a casserole or something. He Unless he can't it. get it out. <laughs> he doesn't like ranch. He doesn't. Well, no, he started eating ranch. Did he? He didn't yeah. like ranch for a long time, but he's finally starting to eat it. I think it was just one of those things he was afraid it was going to be like mayonnaise or sour cream. And he was like, Ugh. me and Braden could drink ranch. It's so good. good. It's just not that good. So good. What else doesn't Ryder eat? You already say mustard. Oh yeah, Ryder doesn't like mustard either. Ryder doesn't like a lot of condiments unless it's hot sauce, sriracha. He loves Japanese mayo, yeah. but he doesn't like regular mayo, mm. which is really weird to me. And he loves barbecue sauce. 
He barely mm. likes ketchup. Now he does eat mayonnaise if it's in like, like a the BLT wraps I make. If he doesn't, if the mayonnaise isn't by itself, if you can't taste it, just mayonnaise, he won't eat it. Right. Where do you get the kids' homeschool curriculum from? Um, AOP online. Um, we use Horizons, Life Pack, and Monarch. But if you go to Alpha Omega Publications, that's, yeah. Anything there is good. Could you show making, <clears throat> could you show making on a budget taco or chicken tortilla soup from canned chicken? Yep. I will do that. Um, my friend Mandy from All Things Mandy, she, go look at her channel. She did a short. Um, she made, I can't remember what it was called. What, chicken chili? Taco soup. Chicken taco that. soup. Oh, it's so good. I can't remember what it was called exactly, but it's up this alley, and she used canned chicken for it, and it was good. I was, like, slurping it up like I ain't never had food before in my life. But go check it out. All things Mandy, and go look at her shorts. Look at her other videos, too, because she has a lot of good stuff on there. She just posted a whole video about taters, y'all. I'm a sucker for a tater. <laughs> now, I'm definitely going to be trying some of those recipes she mm -hmm. had in there. I just found your channel a while back. I love your channel. Thank you. I love you. And I mean it. And she means it. You're stranded on a desert island. Besides Dusty Ryder, Braden, and Colin, what would you bring? Dr. Pepper. Dusty went and got me a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, y'all. Um, I told y'all I stopped drinking sodas. I did. I stopped drinking sodas. I was only drinking water for about six good months. But I started Dr. Pepper back. And let me tell you why. Because it didn't do nothing. It didn't make a single difference in my life. <laughs> Made you grouchy. Yeah. So, I have an occasional Dr. Pepper now. Dusty, I don't buy, like, full Dr. Peppers. No. Occasionally, when Dusty's out and about, a he goes... A Dr. Pepper three times a week. Because they're a dollar for any size at a Weigel's, yep. if you have the rewards card. And he stops and he gets me a dollar Dr. Pepper to keep me happy. It's a simple thing. Okay. Yeah. A Dr. Pepper. And plus, I seen this old lady. Um, she was like 103 years old. And they asked her, what's the secret to living so long? She said, I had three Dr. Peppers a day. Doctor told me it'd kill me, but he died before I did. And I was <laughs> like, dang, I ain't gonna drink three a day, but okay. Um, But seriously, what would I bring? Like, I'm, I'm on, some, you know what? Sometimes I think it'd be nice to be stranded on a desert, uh, deserted island. A, a, a desert island? Desert island? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but it like when i was young i thought that that would be something that we all had to watch out for like yeah. you know uh, like quicksand. yeah like quicksand <laughs> like it was an actual problem and now as an adult i'm like that'd be so nice but we there we some people some of your viewers do have to watch out for quicksand what i mean it's 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 a real thing oh baloney remember that movie beast master Ryder, research quicksand, where it's at, and who has to watch out for it, because I have, the quicksand is real. But remember the movie Beastmaster, like back in the 90s, my sister Nikki was obsessed with that movie, and I remember that quicksand was on that all the time, and I always thought it was like a I legitimate mean, thing. 90% of the population don't really have to work, watch out for it, but there's some people is living in New some New Zealand area. or Australia? Anywhere. Yeah, it's anywhere that there's liquefaction. Okay, what did you bring on a deserted island? My bug out bag, because I have everything. I don't know if that counts, because that's multiple items in it. She said it's one item. One bag. I got one bag. It don't. Um, that I, way, we would be good. I would bring Aquaphor. Sunscreen. <laughs> no. I would bring Aquaphor, and let me tell you why. Because Aquaphor helps chap lips. It helps um, thick side girls who have galding. You know, you know what I'm talking about. When you're having to sweat a lot and walk a lot and on a deserted island, you're going to have to. Until you lose all that weight from no food. And then it's fine, but it'll help your chapped lips. It helps boo-boos. I would bring Aquaphor. That may be mm. we a weird thing to bring, and I might regret it. But right the now. The rescuers will find you laying in the sand, but you won't have chapped thighs. I won't have <laughs> chapped thighs. Shaped thighs. Oh, well, they said chapped eyes. I said chapped thighs. Shaped thighs. I'm losing my voice. It's hard for me to talk and <clears throat> make words. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Where do you get ideas for the meals you serve in your videos? I don't know. 
I just take like basic recipes and I switch them around. Like I said earlier, that's what I do. I don't know. And like if I remember in my head, like, oh, this one time I had this, I'm going to try to mimic that. I'm telling you guys, Rain Man, but with food. I know your homeschooling is all on you or does Dusty help too? I help when I get enlisted to help. Okay, yeah. this is what happens. Um... The children get mm. stressed really. Like, Brayden is the worst. And Colin's starting to kind of get like that. Mm. Colin, he excels in math. He's so He loves science. He's doing zoology this year, and he loves it. But reading, he's having some issues with it. He's having issues with, like, the really long. He's, he's starting to see that we pronounce words differently in the South than how, you know, technically supposed to. Yeah. And he's like, it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, I know, honey. I'm sorry. It's just how we all. But they get frustrated. And when they get frustrated, they, they can cry sometimes. And I'm the one. And I'm like, calming them down. I'm telling It's fine. Yeah. If you keep you crying, that. if you keep crying, they're not going to remember anything. So, let's just breathe. And Dusty's like, oh, my God. He cries with them. So, Dusty, I do enlist him for science a lot of the times. Because he is he's a genius for the science. And when it comes to, like, geometry with the older two, a measuring thing, I was so bad at geometry in school. He is a whiz at it still to this day. I make him do that. I'm like, Dusty, they're doing geometry today. Can you please take over? And he's like, okay. And he, he goes through it, and they like, okay. And it's easy for them. And I'm sitting there like, I don't know what this word means. So, pretty much, he does the things that I am not good at. Geometry. <laughs> in at least one video you showed your backyard, it looks like you have a good sized backyard, but live in like a subdivision. Where are the zoning laws for having chickens? There are none in the county. Uh, we live in the county, and there's not any. Mm -hmm. And now, if we lived in the city limits, we could not have chickens. Yeah. Um. You can have up to thirty chickens back here in the county. Yeah. Before you have to get like a farming license. We can even have a cow. Yeah. I wouldn't. Or pigs. I would take a cow. Neighbors have a pig. A Highlander cow. <laughs> Our neighbor does have a pig in his backyard, but they treat it like a dog. Yeah, it's got its own house and everything. I think it's a pet. It's a pot belly, right? Yeah, it's yeah. big. That's a big it's pig. It's a big pig. Uh, but and, they, yeah. and they got chickens in that pot belly. They got ducks, too. We live in a subdivision, but it's in the middle of the country. Yeah, it's kind of back off the main like, roads a little bit. Out, like, behind... Our subdivision is filled of that's cows. Where, that's where we hunt. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's a subdivision in the middle of nowhere, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's close enough to town that we can yeah. get there in five minutes. Technically, I guess we are pretty close to the city limits where we live. But luckily, we live in the county. Yeah. So, it's good. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that in it's every like state. It's like a sweet spot for us. Yeah. Is it like that in every state? Do you have city limits and then county, and you don't have to go by the city rules because you're in the county? Like, we have a totally different trash pickup than yeah. city. Yeah. City has to pay for trash pickup. We don't. Yeah. That's quite nice. <laughs> Let's see. I would love it if your Aunt Vicky had a crafting channel. Vicky! <laughs> Vicky is my moderator. She watches every one of my videos. Vicky, I'm talking to you right now. He's... Um, perhaps one of the boys could film it and edit it as a class credit. Oh. That's actually pretty smart. Mm. You boys just got enlisted. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Brayden. I think Brayden would actually love doing that, wouldn't you? Would you like to film Vicky's video? Would you rather? I'm not good at filming. But you're good at editing. I, you Brayden made my thumbnails in the beginning of my channel mm. yeah he kind of just didn't want to do it anymore he's not even talked about it since can you do a clothing thrift video <laughs> okay listen i have plans i went through the boys closets okay and i got everything that they outgrew every single one of them and i put them in bags and i have them all stacked downstairs ready to go I'm going to go to Plato's Closet and Once Upon a Child and see if they will take any of them and pay me cash. And I'm going to turn that into a thrifting video to show everybody how you can literally buy your kids clothes 
with the clothes that they used to have because I do it all the time yeah. and I've never showed you guys how I do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. we make two or three trips of, well, two trips a year, I guess. Well, it? no, it's a little more than that. I do it like every season. Oh, yeah. So probably like four. Well, no, sometimes you skip a season and take a big bunch. I've been with you twice this year and I've been with my sister once. Oh, yeah. Year. Well, I'm just counting times that I go. I forget that you And go I want to go. Week. I think, I, but I think Emily might need to go too. We mm. usually go together and make it a big thing. So I might do that. And in Knoxville, they have two Once Upon a Child. So when we take it to one and the stuff that they don't buy, we take it to another and then they buy stuff. So it's like a double whammy. Mm. I don't think they have two Play-Doh's closets though. I've only seen one. I don't know. I'll have to look. Do you make homemade laundry detergent? Yeah. <laughs> I'll link it down below. That stuff is so good, I swear. Or do you like, or do you like myself buy it when it's extremely cheap? Several years ago, I purchased the 64 ounce bottles. They sell at Dollar Tree. I paid 59 cents <laughs> at our local surplus store because I have only myself and use a half a cap plus peroxide and vinegar to most loads. These bottles have lasted me quite a few years. Yes. Okay, so before I made my own laundry detergent, I would go to Dollar General and get their deals. When you, you know, the coupons they send out weekly, and then you can go on Saturdays and get $5 off. Oh my gosh, y'all. Yeah, we did that for a long time. I didn't pay more than like $1.50 yeah. for Gain or Tide. Yeah. And that's how I did that before I made my own. And this is cheaper now. I swear, I love that stuff. It's so good. Yeah. Do you limit your wardrobe or the boys? Just by space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as we can, as long as they got room. I limit shoes. I like for the boys to have two good pair of shoes. And then, like, they they have two good pair of shoes. So, when one's dirty or covered in mud, like it usually happens, I can clean them. They'll have another good pair. And then they have their hunting boots. So, they kind of have three pair at a time. And then, during the summer, they get, like, a croc or flip-flops. Mm -hmm. They don't really wear their tennis shoes during the summer. They just wear the flip-flops or Crocs. So, their tennis shoes don't get worn out. So, I do limit shoes. And I have a limit on how much I spend per shoe. I, I refuse <laughs> yeah. to spend more than $40 per shoe. Now, I do not buy shoes at Walmart or Target. And let me tell you why. It's not that I don't like them. I do. But, I have noticed that if you buy the cheaper shoes... You get what you kind of pay for, and you have to buy more shoes quicker, and it ends up being more costly than, like, a pair of Adidas. So, instead of buying three pair of Walmart shoes and paying $60, I buy one pair of $40 Adidas shoes, and it lasts as long as those three pairs would. Mm -hmm. So, that is one thing I will say. They you normally may, just grow out of them before they run, before they run you know. They're, like, if thing. I buy the good quality shoes... I can actually sell those most of the time. I take those to Once Upon a Child or Plato's Closet, or I put them on Marketplace on Facebook. Keep your boxes. Keep it your helps boxes. The, it helps the resale. People Keep pay extra boxes. money if they're still in a box. I don't know what it is about it, but know. they're in the original box. They pay more for it. I usually get around $15 to $20 per shoe. I always try to keep them in good shape. I even clean them before I post them or take them somewhere with like a toothbrush. I'm not going to give somebody something that's dirty and gross. So, I take good care of them, and I usually get 15 to $20 per shoe, mm -hmm. and that goes on their new shoes that I buy. Per pair. Per pair, sorry. Not per shoe. Y'all know what I yeah. meant. <laughs> but the money that I get for those, it goes on their new pair of shoes, and it just keeps going. It's like a cycle I do. Yeah. So, definitely. Yeah. That's one thing I would say. I know in the moment... That $12, $20 pair of shoe at Walmart and, you know, your kid needs shoes. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But if you can, hold out till the next week when you can put, like, another 20 with it and go find some Adidas or Nike. They or always have sales. Sale. Yeah, always. Shoe show, they always got a good mm -hmm. sale. Sometimes you can even find the good brand for about 25 bucks. Shoe Carnival. Yeah. They're good too. So, definitely try to do that because I swear to y'all, I don't know if it's just my boys, but... They would wear the Walmart shoes for a month, and they'd be talking to you because they'd be opening mm -hmm. at the at the seam. But the Nikes and Adidas, they don't do that. Yep. I love how you do the blessing boxes. Do not have those around here in Maine. But I just started volunteering at a food bank that I take donations to. I think that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have blessing boxes, you can help your community in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think... Everybody, at least once a year, should try to help. If you got, if you're good, if you don't have anything to worry about, and 
you don't really have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. If you can ever spare one meal, make one meal kit and like give it to somebody, no. you will be helping so many people. If everybody does it at least once a year, I got 67,000 subscribers. If each of you do that once a year, that's 67,000 meals mm -hmm. that you have made for a family. That's amazing. How did you and your hubby meet? I was an assistant manager at a store and he was remodeling my manager's house and she introduced us. Mm. And I thought he was a nerd. <laughs> I did. I was wrong. He wasn't nerdy at all. I don't know why I thought that. Um. But I thought he was a nerd. He's just a big redneck. <laughs> And I didn't get that at all that day. My mm. vibe was totally off. <laughs> Any plans for a cookbook? We're working on it, kind of. I'm looking into it, trying to figure it out. Okay, so here's the deal. I was talking to a lady um, that runs a book publishing company. Um, I forgot where she was located. But she <laughs> was ready to do it with me. I was ready to get started. And uh, I just, all of a sudden, just didn't. Why not go that route? I wasn't comfortable with it. Maybe it just wasn't the right timing and I could do it with her later. She was so nice. She was so into it. And she, I seen, I looked up a bunch of her stuff and she's so good at what she does. It's just, I wasn't vibing. Does that make sense? I wasn't, if I'm not 100% comfortable with something, I'm not going to jump into it and do it. And I wasn't 100% comfortable with it. I don't know if it was just the timing or I just need to go somewhere else. But I was like, mm-hmm. But I have a lot of stuff ready to go. I just need. The push? Yeah. <laughs> I promise y'all I'm going to do it. It's just hard. And I want to do an ebook, But I don't know how. <laughs> I'm, I'm not tech savvy. I'll figure this out, y'all. I swear I will. Were you raised in church? Do you belong to a particular church, like denomination? Yeah, I was raised in church my whole life. My papa was a pastor. Fun fact. You want to know a fun fact? I want to know a fun fact. You already know this fun fact. So, my <laughs> papa was a pastor, and he used to hold revivals all the time. And I would spend my entire summers over there. And every time my papa would have a revival, I would go with him. And you know who he revivaled with? <laughs> who did he have revivals with? Who was his partner in holding the revivals? You know this, Dusty. Mm. Tommy Wayne Wallen. Oh. Morgan Wallen's daddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. I, I, that's I, not news to me. That's why I didn't think about Oh, I have heard Morgan get up and sing with his mama in church before when he was little. Fun fact. Oh, do you belong to a particular church? Well, I was raised Baptist, but now Dusty was as well. But I don't really consider myself a denomination now. I'm just a Christian in general. Okay. I try to do what my moral compass tells me to do, and I believe in the Bible, and I try to follow the Bible. I, I follow Christianity the way that... You know, it's written in the Bible. Um, but I don't really want to call myself a particular denomination anymore as I'm older. Mm. You know? It's, uh, I agree. Yeah. I just, I'm a Christian. That's how it is. I'm just a Christian. Yeah. I'm non, non-denominational. Is that what that is? I think so. Is that, I think that's a thing. We just don't really call ourselves anything. We're just... I'm not a Baptist. But... I will go to a Baptist church. Yeah, it's I just mean, myself. I'm right. just Christian values. Our, no, whole our whole families are Baptist. Yeah. What made you want to start doing YouTube? I just felt like I needed to try to help people. Like the inflation crisis. And I did it. Yeah. And I was, I was real. I've never been one of those people that was like, I'm going to do YouTube. I'm going to be a YouTuber. No. I was never, I never thought about it. Until I started getting this, like, tummy turner thing. And I was asking Dustin, I was like, I feel like I need to do something. Like, I know that I can help people if I just tried. And at first, I went on my Facebook. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start posting, like, budget-friendly ways to feed your family. Would you guys like to see that with just my friends list? And they was like, Brooke, start a YouTube. And I was like, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know if I could handle that. I don't know if I could handle the meanies. Yeah. <laughs> and Dusty was like, honey, just do it. And after my tummy turned a little bit, I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. My first video on here, I just picked up the camera and I was like, I'm doing it. And I just did it. And 
Here we are. Listen to your gut. Listen to your gut. Okay. Here we are. Debbie says, hi, I love you. I love you too, Debbie. And I honestly mean that with all of my heart and soul. I love you. You're my besties. Um, why you called your food she? <laughs> and laughing jokes. We always sprinkle pre-children. <laughs> um, let me tell you why I called my food a she. I don't know. I know that was a joke, but still, I don't know. I did just, just come out. out. Um, pre-children sprinkle. Yes. Totally, because I grew up poor and dirt, and you know, mm. it's just, just how it happened. Are you famous around? Oh God, no. No, I'm not even. Really. <laughs> Are you famous around your town now that your t YouTube channel has grown so much? Mm. No, I mean there are a few people here that watch it, and I see them when I go into grocery mm. stores or somewhere. And I became friends with some of them on my personal Facebook, but no, no, <laughs> no, I know who I am. I mean. You said in one of your videos you were not always a nice person. What happened and how did that change and when did you find happiness? Okay, so when I said that I wasn't a nice person, I thought I was a nice person. And a lot of people will tell you that I probably was. I was really giving and I always wanted to help people. But I think there's more to a person to be nice than just that. It's how you carry yourself. And I was bullied so so much growing up by people who called themselves my best friends. They bullied me and made fun of me all the time. And it kind of built up this wall and I wanted, I, I, I like built up a wall of defense. I wanted to defend myself no matter what. As I got older, I didn't want to be bullied. I wanted people to leave me alone. And anytime somebody said one thing to me that offended me in the least little bit, I would go off. Because I didn't want them to think that they could bully me. That's what it was. I know that's what it was. <laughs> so, it all stems from being bullied. But it kind of... It sh I shouldn't have allowed it to change who I was as a person. Because it did. And I was always ready. I was always ready to go. When somebody hit me in the grocery store with their buggy. There was no accident, y'all. I would lose it. How many times, Dusty? <laughs> but see, I'm not, I, was, I was nice. As long as you were nice to me, I was nice. But I was always ready to defend myself. Even if somebody didn't mean something bad towards me and I took it that way, all bets were off. I never, like, assaulted anybody. But with my mouth, I did. I was not a nice person, I feel. I could have done better. And another thing, my sister Nikki, the one who passed away, me and her would butt heads so much. Good reason, but we still, we butted heads a lot. I loved her. She knew I loved her. Me and her, we talked all the time. I was like the one person in the family that she would actually come to when something good happened in her life. But, you know, we were sisters. We butted heads. I butted heads with Nikki more than I did anybody in the family because Nikki was just, she knows. But when she passed away, it really made me think the life is too short. And I know you hear that all the time. It's too short. My sister died in an unexpected, traumatic way. We was not expecting it at all. And it was right after our family celebrated Christmas. There was a really big snowstorm on Christmas Day here in Tennessee. Ice everywhere. And we all couldn't get together. So, we had to do it on January 3rd. That's when all the ice melted and we could finally get together as a family. Nikki did not show up. And I was thinking in my head... Should I call Nikki see if she uh, needs a ride over here or something? But I didn't because my sister was notoriously bad for answering messages and picking up the phone. So, we all did our Christmas thing. We was just like, I guess Nikki didn't want to come today because she did that sometimes. And I came home, got a phone call from my father that said Nikki was found. That moment changed everything in my life about the way I looked at the world completely. Because it, it was awful. It was a traumatic, traumatic experience that I have got diagnosed with PTSD from this. I have <laughs> severe depression from it. I'm better now. But when it happened, it was bad. It was really bad. I had so many regrets. It kills me that my sister had to die in order for my mind to see things differently. But I know Nikki's 
she's proud of it. Right? I feel like she is. And I feel like she, she would lose her mind right now knowing that I was doing YouTube. She would lose her mind. She would be so proud of me. And she would she would share my videos everywhere. And she would giggle. Sit in the corner and giggle from just being so proud of how far that this channel has came. She would. So, uh, that's why I dedicate this whole channel to Nikki. Because I'm trying to spread kindness and positivity. And I'm trying to tell people that life is too short. Love each other. Please just love each other because life is too short. So... It's fine. I won't cry. I'm good. But yes. Anyways, that's why th I did that. Okay, how do you clean season a cast iron skillet? So this is what my dad told me how. Okay, after you wash it, don't use soap when you wash it. Just scrub it with a non-abrasive scrubber. Okay? And then you turn on your stove eye on low. And you set your skillet on it. And all the pores inside of the cast iron has water in it from being washed. And when you turn that stove eye and put the skillet on it, it's going to dry up the inside of the skillet. Then, after it's kind of hot to the touch and you kind of don't want to touch it, put some oil in there and use like a paper towel and rub it around it. Don't leave it like super runny with oil. Just rub all around it. And then turn it off, let it cool down, and put it up like that. And if you keep it well doused in oil like a nice thin layer it'll be good how do you avoid buying unnecessary things or impulse spending on things you haven't planned for you seem very good at pre-planning purchases i'm going to tell y'all right now it's hard. i plan it's hard for me it's hard for him <laughs> but uh, he, i do it i'm good at it but he's just, a free spirit uh, he's a free spirit me i plan everything yeah i plan like a week in advance sometimes I'm, well y'all know with my travel stuff we plan years in advance yeah. but i have a miscellaneous spending account to account for things like that like miscellaneous i know something's gonna pop up i just put so much into miscellaneous that really helps because you can take it from the miscellaneous and you won't have busted your budget that's why i ask if i can have some because i don't ever know and i'm just like well, he tells me, like, if he wants something. I mean, but, yeah, if I want it, I'll tell her, and then He's like, I honey, I want this. It's a little expensive. And I'm like, okay, I'll plan for this for a few weeks, and then we're good. But I am a grabber, too. I like to just. <laughs> He's a free spirit. What is Dusty's job? How long was he in the military? How did you meet? Six years military. Um, Dusty's job, but we kind of like to keep that private because people can get weird and like call people's jobs and do things like that. But another Not thing, that you guys would, but not, you know, y'all know what I mean. Um, so we really don't like to say that, but I will say Dusty is also in college right now. <laughs> He's mm. becoming HVAC certified and a gunsmith. Two things. Mm. I think one is hobby. Mm. Which one? Y'all guess. Okay, that's all the questions that I got for the updated q and I hope that I answered all your questions. I think I did. I don't think I skipped any of them. If I did, I'm so sorry. I love you guys. And remember, as always, be positive. Say bye-bye.